is it a home invasion simulator? You didn't get drafted for Vietnam? Don't oh, trust friend. naked men? This is rust. Where headshots make a sweet little crunch. No base is safe from a couple anti-noob engineers. And if you hear beep, 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 you're about to be evicted. How not to be a new in Rust. Alpha. Rust is an open world survival shooting, building, crafting, and raiding game that is updated bi weekly and made by Face Punch. Before I get you little tribal savages assemble for a war party and send you to your guaranteed death, I want you to ask yourself one question How angry have you ever been at a video game? If the answer is pretty pissed, multiply that number by five, carry the 10, and you're still nowhere near the rage Rust induces from a loss. Something about losing your home, farm, industry, and all your possessions activates a special little part of the lizard brain most games can't touch. So let's look at the basics of new player survival, blueprint farming, building, raiding, airdrops, helicopters, and pro tips. Spawning. Immediately upon spawning into Rust, you start on the coast like some shipwrecked sailor with a rock and a torch. The map you are on is a procedurally generated map that is completely unique to other servers similar to Minecraft. Although the map is unique, unlike Minecraft, it has a limit and is confined to a large island surrounded by water. The map itself has biomes and procedurally generated points of interest, like the dome, the satellite, the airfield, rad cities, dungeons, lighthouse, caves, and warehouses all connected through a road. I will post a link in the description to a website that shows you the layout of your map based off of what server you input. Early game rust is the most brutal since this is the time you are most vulnerable to players, the elements, and animals since you are unarmed and homeless. All of these tips are designed to minimize your interaction with players since you will most likely be outgunned for the majority of your early game. For early game, your best bet is to find a small conservative base that has already been raided, preferably something in the snow or far enough away from the monuments to not attract too much attention. This base will serve as a forward operating base where you can collect enough materials and smelt necessary metal to prepare for your actual base. Aside from the benefits of having already placed furnaces, using an already raided base is helpful since most raiders tend to skip bases they deem unworthy, and especially ones that they assume have already been raided. If you can't find anything in the immediate area available, making the trek out to the snow biome is also another great spot to start a modest 2x2 two two since most new players struggle to survive in these biomes. You too will struggle at first, but the abundant animals in these biomes will provide enough resources to sustain you against the conditions so long as you make a bow and some arrows before you head out there. Don't hit the snow unarmed or naked or it will be useless. You can collect cloth to make the bow via the hemp plant and use your rock to collect stone and wood to start making tools via your crafting screen. You are also given a base amount of known blueprints to start off with in this harsh new wasteland. I can't stress the snow biome enough. Not only does it provide sanctuary against most new players, the abundance of animals, ore nodes, and extra wood from trees will make farming for your real base that much quicker. Blueprint farming. Once you have an established shit shack, make a few beds and bushes near some of the major points of interest like the Death Star, Airfield, or Rad City. Then you are able to cycle these spawn points to farm necessary blueprints to start making guns and all the other gadgets and gizmos of endgame. Blueprints are your endgame in Rust. They, unlike the map, rarely get reset depending on what server you play on. They allow you to craft guns, ammo, rockets, C4, beds, better armor, and a whole plethora of items that separate you from the savages on the coast. If you get raided and killed, you will always retain the knowledge of these blueprints unless the server has a BP wipe. I recommend playing on an official face punch server like Rustified since they don't wipe BPs too often and have a great community of admins to combat hackers. I will post a link to their server, info, and community in the description. There are several ways to obtain blueprints for items you desire. 
The first is by collecting blueprint fragments, which can then be upgraded to pages, and with enough pages can be made into books, and with enough books can be made into libraries. All stages of these upgrades can be revealed to show different tiers of blueprints, with libraries being the highest and having the hardest to obtain items like AK-47, C4, Hollow Sight, Silencer, Incinerary Rocket Ammo, Explosive 556, and much, much more. Once you reveal the libraries, it is all random number generated. You might get something you already have, or might get exactly what you want. Another way to obtain the item in which you seek is first finding the item itself, then sticking it into a research table. The table will give you a base level chance of giving you the blueprint and in turn destroy the item. You can add blueprint fragments to increase the percentage of it being revealed. At 1000 blueprint fragments, you will reveal all end game items. I think this is the most efficient way to obtain the BPs you desire since it only costs the item itself plus a max of a thousand frags. Constructing a library on the other hand costs 1250 frags and doesn't allow you to pick what is revealed. I will post a link in the description with more information on blueprint frags and what tiers have the capacity to reveal what. Also, you can get the exact BP you want in barrels or boxes which spawn at one of the most aforementioned points of interest. Those are all random luck though. Finally, the social aspect. I have no shame in farming 20k wood for a guy if he offers up a bolt action or AK blueprint on a new server. Open up chat and start talking to people. I rarely get scammed with this, but just use common sense. Most of these guys are so well established they have an abundance of resources and have no interest in screwing you out of something they have a bunch of anyway. They just need wood or stone to further their already expansive empire. The biggest grind in Rust is obtaining all the endgame blueprints you want. The fastest and most efficient way to do this is to use the aforementioned spawn hopping via sleeping bags and bushes you put down on the monuments. You can also run laps on the road that connects these monuments since they, like the monuments, have boxes and barrels that spawn blueprint frags alongside the road. After a couple hours of dedicated blueprint farming, you will find a weapon you can use to defend yourself. After a few days of doing this, you should have it all. So you got your C4 and rocket BP. Now what? Building. Building in Rust is a doomsday prepper's wet dream. If you can imagine it, most likely you can build it in Rust. Before you start building that unraidable base on the rock or hidden mountain sex cabin, let's go through the basics. Tool cupboards cost 1000 wood and are absolutely necessary to keep enemies from building near or on your base. After placing one, you have an area around your base that is now blocked from anyone else building. You can authorize on it, and then you are the claim holder for that area. Cupboards follow an alpha protocol, so if you stick two cupboards next to each other, the one you place first will take precedent to its sister cupboard. If the alpha is destroyed, its sister will then take alpha. This is beneficial for large builds or multiple floor builds since cupboards have a max elevation range and you will need to place multiple cupboards the higher up you go. Also, if the alpha is compromised by a player, he has full privies throughout the base. Not all walls are built alike. The order of tier is as follows. Twig, wood, stone, metal, and armored. However, metal is pretty useless for the most part and should be considered a tier below stone. Wall placement matters. Make sure your walls are facing the correct direction, otherwise a group of four raiders can easily pickaxe them down without using a single C4. Here's walls facing the correct way, which are impossible to pickaxe. Here are walls facing the incorrect way, which will melt against raiders with pickaxes. Design. When designing a new base, there are a few things you must assess before starting. What is the purpose of this base? How much material will it cost to complete? Am I going over ambitious with the foundations and the twigs to start? And finally, is this a good location for farming the materials I need for it? For a main base, you must consider everything. You must look at the path of least resistance into your base for raiders. Assume that you are raiding your own base and find the weakest spots on it, then fix the flaws. Multiple airlocks, honeycombs, and dummy doors are essential for a highly defendable base. Most raiders have a limited number of resources and will stop at a certain point if they feel like they aren't making any progress. There's no master build for base raiding, since a group of motivated raiders can take down anything, but there are some simple tricks you can use to deter casual raiders, like honeycombs and airlocks. 
Honeycombs are an additional wall layer outside of your usable wall layer. So this means they can't see four straight into the base. They must go through two layers of walls. Airlocks are just exactly like they sound. An extra set of doors that keep you from the outside. I will put a link in the description to a Rust building simulator called Fortify that lets you play with designs without wasting materials in game. Automated systems. Rust has a couple automated systems in place to cut down your farming time. The pump jack, oil refinery, and quarry are the three main systems. The pump jack produces crude oil which can be refined via the refinery with wood. It then turns the crude oil into low grade fuel which can continue to fuel the pump jack or a quarry if you have it. After you obtain a pump jack via crafting, airdrop, or other means, you must throw a detonator charge down in the sand. Crude oil can only be found in the desert biome. When you throw down a charge, you will see a distinctive oil well gushing from the location of the detonator charge. There will also be a bag of oil that springs up from the explosion. Depending on how many crude oil are found in the bag, it is indicative of how much oil that location will produce with a range of 1 to 5 crude oil per location. You can then place the pump jack down on top so long as there isn't any player made structures, monuments, or rocks interfering with the area. Like the pump jack, quarries can be placed in the same manner. However, high quality metal which is used for guns, armored walls, and attachments can only be found in the snow and forest biome. When you are looking for a quarry location, detonator charges will spring up bags with a range of 1 to 5 showing how much it produces, similar to the crude oil. The best possible quarry location will have 5 sulfur, 5 metal ore, 5 high quality metal, 5 metal fragments, and 5 stone. But all of the possibilities of anything below this are available. Make a healthy amount of detonator charges and keep prospecting your desired location until you find something you want. So now you have your guns, armor, and epic base at home. The Rust world is yours! Now what? Raiding. Since I consider raiding offense in Rust and base building defense, this is something I personally don't start doing until I feel like I am well defended at home. Solo raiding in Rust is hard mode. I highly recommend making some online friends or bringing some real ones to Rust if you want to get the ultimate raiding experience. Attacking someone's base who has been waiting for this moment all their rust life, you are inherently going against the odds. They have sniper towers that never see action until some poor soul like yourself attempts to raid. They have hoarded hours of work inside their base, extra guns, food, all the things they need to defend themselves, and they even have respawn points on the point you are attacking. If you are raiding solo, I highly recommend offline raiding. Offline raiding is exactly what it sounds, waiting until the player's homeowner is offline. This is the safest raid to do if you are solo. I play really conservative in offline raiding, bringing only a couple C4 and lots of pickaxes. I try to target conservative bases that look like easy targets. Bases where windows expose building cabinets or reversed walls are the easiest. A lot of players consider raiding some sort of ROI or return on investment. Personally, raiding, regardless of the outcome, is the reward for me. Whether you get thousands of sulfur or just the satisfaction of locking someone in their base while they sleep, every raid you survive is worth the cost. Offline raiding is also like a great puzzle that can be crashed by the homeowner at any time. Finding where and how they built as you start blowing up walls and pickaxing the guts of the base out is a lot of fun. The moment when you finally do reach the loot room or the alpha cabinet, it's truly epic. Online raiding is absolutely one of the most heart-pumping experiences in Rust. When you have a small group of four friends simultaneously attacking a base where you're receiving return fire while C4ing their base is unlike any other experience. Make sure to bring bags to put down in case you are killed in action and lots of medical, pickaxes, and ammo. Some of the most epic moments in Rust come from these online raids when you finally get through and the player's rage is broadcasted on voice or chat. I highly recommend scouting locations for mega bases before you raid and plan accordingly. Having dedicated snipers cover the engineers blowing up walls, medics, and pickaxe soldiers is essential. There is no absolute way to raid. If you aren't a fan of pickaxing, just bring tons of C4 and rockets to start blowing shit up. Rockets do splash damage and it only takes one to annihilate a metal door. For stone walls, it takes two C4 or four rockets. Use these items wisely. 
If you're going for a larger clan, this is the best bet since most of them will most likely be offline, and the longer you take to raid, the more time they have to text their buddies to get online. No matter the outcome of the raid, just remember the journey is far more rewarding than the destination. Airdrops. Airdrops are planes that fly across the map to drop loot. They drop a military box with a parachute at random locations. These drops can have anything from guns to burnt wolf meat. If you're just starting off, they are worth going for, but most of the time end up in bloodshed since groups of death squads are actively roaming around anyway. You can also find supply drops from these airdrops that call in the airdrop itself via a smoke grenade to a specific location. Helicopters. The most recent addition to Rust is the Helicopter, a roaming Huey that actively hunts players with gear on them. This helicopter, like the airdrop, will contain a ton of C4, rockets, guns, attachments, explosive ammo, and a whole bunch more. The helicopter will shoot rockets and even napalm to players it is engaging. This requires multiple people to take it down. To take it down, you must disable the tail and main rotor. When the helicopter is smoking, it is at 50% health. If one of the rotors is out, it will catch on fire. Once both rotors catch fire, it will then crash with a server-wide explosion. Crates will then spawn on fire next to the helicopter. These crates will continue to burn for 8 minutes until they can be looted. You can also salvage the helicopter for metal once it is no longer on fire. Pro Tips When raiding a base, if you get stuck, look for a furnace or building cupboard. You can pickaxe the floor it is below, then use them to jump to the next level. When farming for high quality metal, you don't have to finish the node. Simply cherry pick the node by hitting it until you get the high quality metal, then move on. You can tell if pickaxing a metal door is worth it by telling which way the door is facing. If the code lock is on the right, you are good to pickaxe through, no problem. When raiding, most people in the snow generally have the most amounts of loot. I find the most gear at these bases since most of them are left alone in their solitude. Count every loss as a win. I have over a thousand hours in Rust and I'm still learning how smart people are who play this game. If you get raided, learn from it and how you can improve on the next build you do. That's it. That's the short end of Rust gameplay. Rust has loads more coming, including flamethrowers, cars, sniper scopes, dungeons, and even some secret stuff we haven't even heard of yet. You are now ready to take to the beach in with more knowledge than 90% of your fellow savages. The rest, though, you will have to discover for yourself or die trying.